Listen to this over to my boys, Bryce and Ten. Fellas, you should have a fun game right now. You should. Should. <laughs> we certainly Obviously should. Though. Obviously, as uh, we go into this one, the thieves. Uh, so much conversation around them at the moment. People asking for a roster change, a role change, a management change, a co everything going on with them. And they are looking to get better going forward into major number three. Uh, it's a big game against Boston Breach, who basically have set the tempo at the moment for being a team to beat and i don't mean as in an elite level team i mean as like with in terms of benchmarking if you're above boston breach you're having a good time if you're below boston breach you're not having a good time but it's a big win game for thieves they need the points desperately and probably a little confidence in the bag ton absolutely absolutely they do need the confidence my, sorry my head is still bewildered at that stat they won 94 percent of their half points if they outscore them on the first hill that's that's pretty crazy though, right? I mean, when you think yeah. about it, 94%. That's yeah, what? It's, it's, right, okay, I mean, so basically, we, we we could just essentially chalk up the rest of the map if they, if they lose this opening break. <laughs> Are we for it? Anybody? No? Okay. I mean, well, it's, I, I mean kind like, of a, it's kind of a weird one, right? Like it's an anomaly. a strange one. Yeah. But I wonder anyway, how sorry, that kind I, of correlates across the rest of the league. Yeah, I'd be very curious. I'd imagine it's probably nowhere near as like that bad. I mean, it's it, it, it's kind of coincidental, surely. But I mean, let's see how they do on this opening break. It is going to be the Boston Breach, the first ones in. Let's see who outscores each other on this first deal. We might get a good indication of how this map's going to go. Of course, Kavutu Hardpoint was notoriously so good for Thieves until they started calling people out on it. And then it turned to, well, not great. Thieves so far, though. 15 points, they're good. They're inside the point. Methods and Co. trying to find a break back. And again, I've said this about a million times here, it always pops into the memory how good methods can be on this map. And they're going to need every bit of that firepower today against Thieves. Envoy finds two. And right now, they're looking for the rotation at the moment. Thieves are in a good position for it. Draza trying to take down Nero, but it's not going to work. Really good spot coming in P2. And there is your outscore on P1. So, is this the job done for Thieves, or is they going to go against the rhetoric that we've completely forcefully set up here? Octane and Co are trying to get control of both, but Envoy now on a three spree, make that a four. Had a really bad time, if I remember rightly, last time we seen him on this map. Not a good showing from him whatsoever. Himself and Kenny have really been, I would say, two of the biggest bugbears for the side of Thieves fans, I would say. Things have not been going fantastic for them, but it's a really, really good start. That P2 control for the majority of time. Nero will find a kill and eventually start getting heated up for the side of Boston, but he's uh, having their way with the breach side at the moment doing very well about it and they've actually played both quite interestingly oh, obviously been jumping on and off this point many many times to hold control rather than just sit in and soak and it's worked out they've got all the scrap time going forward but this is telling Nero trying to punch through ring here and get control of these spawns for the next one hasn't managed to work so far Capsule will find Kenny eventually but it's LA Thieves who make this first rotation work and they're going to make the third one work here as well Fantastic stuff over one from P1 to P2 to P3. They've been the one in control from the get-go. This is a solid, solid lead for the side of the LA Thieves. And can they keep it up? Octane, gonna die over towards P1. Methods and TJ, I'm gonna find that push on through. Boy, Draza have done good work here to try and keep them off it. It's only gonna be TJ in a position to do much about it. It's in there for the cover and it's a hold from Thieves when it wasn't looking likely. It was a momentary 2v4. Boston Breach will have the luxury of that rotation over towards P4 in just a second, but I mean, they're about 90 points behind already, Brycey, so not the start that the Breach would have wanted at all. No scrap, though, for Boston if they can jump into it now. Keep an eye on Envoy. He has managed to slip in it just a little bit. He's going to fight Capsule here as well, and Capsule wins a very, very important gunfight. Boston have been known for starting a little bit slow in the CDL at times. Let's see if that's the same old story with them because they have an opportunity to bring these points right back. You know, trying to hold control of both, not going to work, Tan. Things can change very, very quickly. When you're talking about Gav P4, and for and Kenny, though, starting to find some kills. That puts Boston under a little bit of pressure. TJ is running aggressive there as well as Octane finds another five and six in a row for Sam. <laughs> Looking to find the Glide Bomb as these break on through. They are handling Boston Bridge at the moment. Yeah, he's now playing his life, waiting for this one. He's going to want this glide bomb in his back pocket, but he's outnumbered and somebody jumps for him, and that's an easy kill for Octane in the end. Making another easy kill. Octane going berserk on Gavutu. And the points will still stack for Boston. With the glide bomb in the pocket. LaRue's feeling comfortable. 
So Thieves Troll, that did lose a lot of points there. Getting the hold of that guy bomb on Gavutsu. Very, very powerful. Keep an eye on that as we go into the rest of the game. But I don't think Thieves would have been minded too much if you were heading in towards P5 with a 60-point lead. And they snatched your hand off for it. We're here now, and of course, Kenny holding down P1 as best as he possibly can. And that's going to shut off a lot of this pressure that was coming in here from the Boston Breach. TJ is the only one who can answer back. Draws out. Oh, he's not going to deal with them either. So TJ going to put himself in a good position to try and help his team break this. A little bit of pressure coming in from both, though. TJ Halley with a huge win as well. And Envoy and Kenny eventually team up, and that relieves some of the pressure Envoy was probably feeling. Gets himself into a much safer position on this rotation. Method's trying to find a couple of kills, allowing his teammates to push forward on it, but... It's not really coming in for them. They cannot get the string of kills coming forward, especially with the slaying from LA Thieves. Thieves have been absolutely lights out. Thieves have only been breaking 35% of hills on Gavutu, which is first. <laughs> but the thing is, Thieves haven't really had to break it because they've been there first every single time. Boston Breach struggling to find those breaks. It's a telling scoreline. 100 point is the difference. The side of Thieves, of course, Boston Bridge, so you can get some decent time over towards P1 here. Maybe you can find a way back into the game, but you're already considerably behind here, Brycey, but a couple of kills go that way. Good opportunity for points, and they need it. You can already see how many Thieves are going for the stack, though. That's a huge push straight up the stairs. They're going to go for it. Somehow Octane gets the breach kill. Looking for it as well. Nero desperate to hold on. He knows he's outnumbered here in the hill as well. And somehow Thieves, with a clean break from one direction, have broken the breach and now they're on the back foot uh, octane is frying make that another six kills in a row 24 and 7. it's eventually oh. gonna fall it was already weak and well i mean you would have doubled up on the glide bomb so it would have been a waste but anyway this is looking like a good rotation from the boston breach over towards p2 we go they've got complete control keep an eye on capsule come around from behind as well they've got some problems with players in and around green there's one there's two they line up nice and easily there's number three as well for capsule phenomenal work really smart push from him but i avoid just gonna completely slow that down with two of his own look like capsule and boston bridge had a good spot to be in there bryce but it's been broken TJ jumping off and oh, somehow oh. Octane has won that gunfight. Don't even know. Shooting behind his back as well. Methods trying to hold on to the boat for his team. Finds two. And it's just a slugfest as both teams go at it. But it's LA Thieves who walk away holding control again. And some of that has to be attributed to Octane. He's 28 to 9. He's on a streak again. Somebody has given this man his Wheaties because he has turned the flip up today. He's shooting suns out of that automaton right now. My goodness. 29 and 9 from Octane. And, and you can hear the kind of the surprise in our voice because he has not been at this kind of level all year long. But if he could pull out this sort of performance, I mean, it just puts Boston in, in a terrible, terrible position. I, I mean, it's a questionable call for the guy, but oh, maybe oh, onward. Oh, okay, oh. never mind. He's just going to thread it through the eye of a needle. And two more to his name. Make it eight in a row for Octane at 32 and 9. The LA Thieves are 20 points away from smoking Boston Breach on that number one. And unfortunately, he won't get his glide bomb there. Two of those kills did end up coming through from the glide bomb himself. But hey, on that scoreline, I don't think he's too worried about it. He is frying somewhere. Lando screaming human turret over and over again as Octane cannot be beaten today. And that's the final tick. Welcome to the 100 point oh. club, Boston Breach. What is going on with Octane? I mean, that is as impressive as you would like to see from an AR, full stop. I, I mean, we think about some of the best performances that we've seen from ARs, and there's somebody on the opposite side in methods that has been phenomenal all year long. A little bit slow, major three, and well, I mean, how can you match that? Octane comes sprinting out of the box. Look, look at that. <laughs> My what goodness. Is non-traded kills 34 and 11 it was a show the entire way through kills per hill average damage per hill everything was going to octane his teammates and only only one of them actually ended up going positive he just completely shut down the map and he was feeding himself i'm not even particularly happy with with his reaction after the game he sort of just laid back like it was just a walk out into the park
I'm fairly certain he doesn't have a chair. He's just sitting there levitating at the moment. Probably one of the most dominant one map performances from a single player on a team that we have seen. And this is the issue with Thieves. Sometimes everybody thinks they're not very good and other times performances like that. I mean, we can't cast out of enough. He was getting the cuts. He was helping on the rotations. Of course, and personal, he was doing the business there. The glide bomb to secure the get. I, I mean, literally, nearly a picture perfect in our performance. And, and you know what's more impressive about it? He's done it against methods as well. Who has? Okay, I said it's not been great during uh, during uh, stage three, but over the season, he, he's been phenomenal and one of the best hours in the game. And Octane. Dad. I mean, he's just schooled yeah. him. He's just completely schooled him over the whole game. I mean, you can't just put it all down to methods, of course, but if you compare the two hours against each other, Octane, I, I, I think you have leaves. to look on the positive side of this one. Like, how do you deal with an AR that's hitting like that? He almost got four glide bombs that game, by the way. Like, I know, obviously, he had a couple of chances of doubling up, but I think it's seven streak, then he had a six, and then obviously the eight, but he had two from the glide bomb. I think there was another five I saw somewhere else. You just there's just no stopping him hitting clean over and over again. I mean, there was nobody safe. It, it did kind of feel like Boston were kind of one by one at certain stages, but I think if you're so far behind, then it, then it kind of does come into that fact of right okay, well, we need to get in quick. There's no necessarily see pushes having to go in here. We need to move fast, and that might have just played in top ten's hands. But you've got to give him every single credit for that one. You said what, it might be that it, game? It what might that be game? one of the most impressive single performances we've seen from a player. And it's somebody on Thieves who have been kind of meh. Also, I actually I would even argue worse than meh for most of the season. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Flex those biceps off, Dane. You deserve it. I I I I I don't understand, alright? I've watched an awful lot of Call of Duty in my time. And the smart money was probably on Boston. But that kind of performance came out of nowhere. I don't even think this season, Octane has given us even a real shining of that potential. I'm, I actually just can't believe that, that how well he's played that. Like a solid game on, on Kavutu for him. Like, look, look, there's been a lot of questions around it. I, look, there's been questions over every single member of this LA Thieves roster. And You're right. rightfully so, <laughs> and rightfully so. But he's been under fire just as much as anybody else. I mean, we've all, well, we've heard rumors here and there, but yeah, I mean, that might stifle them away a, a little bit because that was phenomenal. Let's see if he can keep it up through the rest of the uh, series here. But the Boston Breach, you want a zero behind. When we were looking at the map still, Bryce, which we just had a slight glimpse at there as well, we said that that first map was essential for Thieves because we actually do not mind the rest of them for the side of the Boston Breach. Before the squad, let's have a look at their game fuel keys to victory and see the route in for them here because, well, I mean, we wouldn't have wanted to start like that. Put it that way. Yeah, kind of crazy. What could Boston Breach do to get back into this one? People are asking about methods. Obviously, during Major 2 qualifiers, a 1.33 KD has since cooled off significantly. A 0.93, I don't know what's going on in the Methods camp, but clearly has been struggling a little bit going forward, and they need him back on form, especially against Octane, apparently. It's not something I thought before this, but advantage in maps 2 and 5. Thieves have not had a good S&D. That has obviously been written in the stars. Good chance for this S&D for them to come back. And... I was going to say, hill setup critical, but on Gavudu, it doesn't really matter because Octane's just carving everyone yeah. to bits. He didn't get a chance to set up on a hill because they lost pretty much every single rotation. So, I mean, yeah, that keys to victory would have been absolutely fantastic for them had they managed to get there, but <laughs> never mind. I mean, yeah, for the side of Boston Breach, you need to chalk that one up. That is a dominant, dominant Gavudu performance from the side of Thieves. And just to reiterate back to that point that we were talking about, that 94% of hard points this season after outscoring the opponent on the first hill, the rest of the league setting at 67%. So, just make sure you win the first opener break, Thieves, and, and you're good, you. That's fine. That, that that has to be your <laughs> tactic going forward. But search and destroy, not so Gucci, Brycey. It honestly has not been a good time of things in search and destroy for the side of Thieves. Specifically on this map, it is not looking spectacular at all. A nine and two record for the side of Boston. And of course, for Thieves, one and five. Be something if they won this one. 
<laughs> still, I'm still having a little yeah, trouble. That's a 3.09 drop to map number one. All the statistics are for Boston Breach on the S&D, though. Let's find out if that holds some weight. Octane looking for a bit of information, not taking the shots quite yet. And it's looking like a potential B push coming in for LA Thieves. Nero making moves. Nero going to find the push forward. Octane not just doing it with the auto, the grenades are hitting Diffie today as well. Nero not in a bad spot here though, but it is going to be a three versus three. And boy, we'll break these doors down and well say, well, Sam, if you're doing that on the first map, just keep it up here. Himself and Kenny providing overwatch, but methods falling as does Nero. And this push has been shut down completely. Well, Caps it all last alive. Not a lot of time to do this. Would have to find some picks to even make it a possibility. But it does look like a potential push coming in. Caps it all. Looking forward and Kenny sit him. Easy cut down in the end. LA Thieves keep on rolling. And you would just presume that Thieves have done a good amount of work on this map. Sitting at 1-5 and five in their record, of course. They're heading into it and allowing it to slip by considering Boston's record. The presumption is, is that you've done a decent bit of work, but that's a good start. Good attack. Maybe it was Kenny's haircut. Maybe that's what's changed things. <laughs> yes, it's inspired Octane. That's what it's done. It's Octane's like, like, bro, you look I good. Like the, I like your cut, G. <laughs> <laughs> I like your cut, G. Is that something that we ever expected to come out of your mouth? Absolutely not. Nobody said that to you, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, oh, all dear. right, all right. Back into the game, Boston Breach. Looking for this push here. They've actually got some timing onto this one. They've managed to get into B pretty successfully. Envoy going to find them, though. Instantly finds Nero. Slips the net. A three versus four for Boston. Still a good spot for Boston here. Caps it all, though. He's about to get rushed, and he's about to be in trouble. They're trying to watch the push that's going to come in through office, and look at those nades that have headed on their way in. Capsidal surviving. Not too sure much health he's got left, but not much now. Octane fights his second of the game. The break is in. The kills are there. And all of a sudden, TJ left in a one versus three, and LA Thieves are flying at him. And that is another round over towards Thieves. This is just... Could not be far further away <laughs> of what we've seen from Thieves so far this season. A brilliant performance so far. Following it up, the search and destroy. So at the moment here, two rounds in a row. And I had, I had a point I was going to make what? about obviously their, some of the news about Thieves this week because they brought in a, a new coach, but I don't really want to give a coach that much credit for the turnaround we've seen. But <laughs> it, is early, take it, that it is early days. <laughs> it is early days for LA Thieves against Boston in this game. Still an awful lot could go right for Boston, especially considering this map heavily favors them. They just need to get their feet under them and get back into this game. At the moment, you can see a 2-2 split coming in. Boston looking towards B and A, but Envoy already taken down Nero. TJ in a little bit of trouble as well. Envoy having a good map here as well, getting aggressive. That's five in a row for him. TJ, if you could have found that one, it could be the bomb planter alongside of it. Capsule with the flank, though. Is going to find one. Sorry, it's not Capsule on the flank. It's actually Methods. He is now all alone and nearly dead. Two HP. Can answer back though, 1v2. Still a little bit of time remaining. It would be very difficult to make this work though. He has to find these players from Thieves. And Boston could do with it. A 1v3. Lift their spirits and he's found Kenny. And Kenny's just going to play his life. A little bit of shouldering, a little bit of patience. And Method is running out of time. Yeah, you're never challenging that if you're Kenny. Method now knows that this one. Not going to happen. The jig is up and Envoy may well just be looking for this kill to secure another one for himself and get that little bit closer to the glide bomb. But perfect search and destroy from the side of Thieves so far. I have to say, Boston looked like they had it kind of locked in, but the nades, the practice nades from Thieves have automatically got a couple of their first bloods so far into this one. And Boston just need to figure things out. I still don't think this is over. Statistically, the better team, LA Thieves, may be today the better team. And Envoy changes tactics, and eventually Octane will be taken down. And it's Boston with the numbers. Razor actually goes for a huge chow there. Two versus two, Methods finds it. And Envoy one versus two, stays alive. He's on a six streak as well. Oh, you see Methods. He has sent him. And it's 6 and 0. You best believe he's chasing him down. There he is. 
Methods being chased. Methods being hunted. Seven in a row for Envoy. Draws is just like, my team is so disgusting. Look at them. What is going on? This is this is the kind of performance that we expect out of a team like Thieves, though. You look at that roster, and this is what you expect. Story players, st fantastic players on their day, but we just haven't seen it come together. And is this maybe the culmination of some hard work that they've been putting in? Because I, I tell you what, the other day, in their previous series last weekend, I believe we commentated that one, Pricey, and they looked terrible. It looks this broken. is very, very different. I, I want to say Boston Breach just do not look at the races here either, but LA Thieves are bodying them. It's good to see smiles on players' faces, but Boston Breach desperate looking for it, but it's first blood again for Thieves. Can Boston Breach find this? Capsule might find Kenny. He's checking every angle for it, and he does eventually find Kenny. Brings it back to a three versus three. Thieves do not have control they would like at this point. TJ going to go down, though. Back to a three versus two. And that bomb's going down again, Tan. Octane finds another capsule left. And a one versus three. Oh, if you can get rid of Octane, there maybe would have been a chance. But now, three arrows all staring exactly where the rookie is sitting. He's very dead as well. And LA Thieves are pretty much in the driving seat now to get that 2-0 lead. Well, <laughs> is it is Octane looking at the play call book there? Did I just see a little notebook come out? I don't know. I don't know. But look at how high their spirits are soaring. And I will at this point reiterate something here that we did talk about that may have been lost in the noise. This is actually a pretty important game for Thieves. Bearing in mind in the bubble at the moment, the ones who are sitting on potential of top eight for champs, Thieves are one of them. And the rest of the people in that bubble are having a very good time as well. They are earning points left, right, and center. Thieves have to keep up. Capsule very quickly getting this bomb down. Octane now in a tough, tough spot. Envoy though, has he slipped the net? Oh, Nero would have seen him. He would have called that out of Capsule or not. Steps into the site. Nero mustn't have seen him, but Envoy just continues this streak. The Dark Prince just causing issue for absolutely everybody. Oh my goodness. From one of the most dominant hard point performances from Octane to Envoy. I don't know what's going on. If you're listening to this, if you are watching this, it's a bit of a madness today. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't break this down, okay? There was nothing to break down. Boston Breach are getting smoked. I, 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 look, I, I want to. I want to absolutely. You know me. I do like to go on a team who are not playing well. But Thieves are playing sensational here, and Boston Breach do not have an answer. Not a single one. Oh, Every no, first blood over towards Breach. What is it? What is it with Envoy the day? Fast S and D, by the way. Zero, like, nine and zero. Everybody's everybody's going for the speed run S and D method, and uh, yeah. Well, unbelievable. Like, I, but but it's also super frustrating because it's just like, where is this all of the time? Where is this all the time? That is, is two is as convincing maps as you could possibly want. Against, oh. by the way, and it's not it's not a bad team in Boston Bridge as well. Absolutely, they're not playing the greatest whatsoever. I, I I can't even break down what they're doing wrong because nothing is going right. You can't say anything in particular. I mean, they just get run over consistently. I can't, I can't stop really, laughing. Like a, literally, like a knife through butter. This is uh, absolutely ridiculous. It's actually an absurd game. That's the that's the crazy thing about it. It's just absurd. Coming into this one, Boston Breach were the favourites. Going into the S and D, they were the favourites, and now LA Thieves are speed running it. Let's find out though. Is it a way back for Boston Breach? Do we have a bigger series on our hands, or are Thieves different gravy? All that and more coming up after this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you right after this.
Duty League is brought to you by Zenny. Armor your eyes with Blocks Gaming Glasses starting at $24 by visiting zenny.com forward slash CDL. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Upgrade your game with a scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Call of Duty League. If you are just joining us, You've missed a bit of a madness and it would have been easy to miss because it was fast. LA Thieves have come out the gates in a form we may have never seen them in. Octane, the 3.09 on the first hard point. And Envoy, flawless, 9-0 on that S&D with a 6-0 total score for them. Boston Breach are shook, but can they recover as we go into Berlin Control? And Berlin Control not necessarily looking the most fantastic of maps for the side of Boston Breach, but... I mean, with the way that the first two have went, we could play any map here, and I don't think Boston Bridge will be able to deal with what Thieves are doing this match for Methods, though. I mean, that is not just the difference, I would say. Uh, 0 0.79 absolutely yeah, is not looking fantastic for him. Octane at 2.92. That is absurd. <laughs> I love the fact that his KD's only slightly dipped through the SMB. It's still a 2.92. I don't know if we're going to get that same performance out of him. But we need to see a bigger performance out of the breach. Already pretty stereotypical B push coming in as well. The kill's already flying towards them here. Envoy's got another one. One player left. Capsidal has to hold down the fort. Not the worst here for the breach. They have been infiltrated over towards the B side, but four members can make this push here. Haven't been able to quite find the brick, and they watch the side door thieves now, because, I mean, Boston Breach just cannot find a way through. Already Kenny in an advanced position. They will find the kills, though. But is the damage already potentially done? Draza will get dealt with, but that is a hell of a start by thieves. Two ticks over towards B. Now all concentration will go over towards the A side. It was a good start from LA Thieves, but they had the stack on, on it and, and Kenny kind of pushed out. And that, that probably would have gone if, if they'd all stayed alive. It's one of those though, isn't it? It's, it's, you can cover up from so many different angles. Do you sit inside the point, soak up the time? Kenny was trying to get an advanced position on it. If he could have found a couple of kills, it would have been fantastic, but as it goes, he didn't. Draza and Code though, looking to make a dent in over towards A. Takes one semi-decent push from the Thieves over towards me, and this round might be done, but TJ yet to get on the board. We continue that way. The air progress is slowly being made here by the side of Thieves. That's all they need is slow. Two ticks onto B. That is the difference, though, and LA Thieves, if they find another wave of kills, there's no time for Boston Breach to really react to it. So they've got to be careful. Their setup now has to be perfect. They need to keep LA Thieves staggered off that respawn and not allow them to hit in numbers. Already you can see the defenses are up done. This is doable for the Boston Breach still. Keep them up as long as you can. And Void just continuing where he left off. The Reaper of Berlin at the moment. Inside the point now that will slow the time down. Stop it infinitely as TJ and Co have to find some kills around the outside this might just be the semi-decent break that Thieves need to get a hold of yet Octane inside the point doesn't really need to do much more than just lay down it's done. nobody from the Boston Breach is nearby just get inside the point if you're the side of Thieves Methods will come back though but is that going to be enough TJ you have to get inside the point you have to go now and boys alone 
Somehow, Boston oh Bridge have still held on to this. The team's pushed too hard there. They just need to stack the point. Yeah, a little bit of stacking might have worked for them just to get that tick over the line. And now all that progress has gone away. And again, they have to make this push, but Kenny finds the first towards the back. Octane finds Capital as well. It's not looking good for Boston. Kenny's going to find Methods out here at the same time, and kills are flying in for the Thieves. Three of their players able to get into this one very, very quickly if they want to. Draza makes another important kill. Capsule not actually able to get there in time. And LA Thieves walk away with their attack. And the thing you need to keep an eye out for is that LA Thieves were successful attacking like four times. They were never really held out of it. They weren't. And I think that just kind of comes down to British not being able to get any ticket control throughout that whole entire round. They're kind of getting pulled across the map by Thieves. It's okay, well, we had a good start over towards B, so now we're going to go over towards A, and we have to slow them down over towards A. If we don't, they've got too much of an easy time to B. And if you're Boston, you've never got a chance to even set up. I mean, you didn't give yourselves a chance to set up. And Thieves breeze past them, as they have done throughout the last two maps. How can Thieves hold the defensive side of things here? Boston Breach, we need to see just something very, very quickly. We certainly do. Boston Breach down, but maybe not out. Let's find out how the comms are feeling with the Boston Breach. Listen in. One shot early. Actually, I'm going to take this. I'm going to be here, too. Nice. It was Draws. It was Draws. Okay. Nice. I'm going to be here, too. Yep. Right, right. I'm going to shoot. He's going back up. 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 He's our steps. He's our steps. Envoy. Okay. He's dead. Okay. I'm checking with the guy. Okay. Envoy was our steps. Wait. He's back train, right? Yeah. He was. Yeah. Our steps. Our steps. I can kill. Stay down. I don't see him. I'm back alley, guys. I'm alone. I want to. I'm sitting on our side. Oh, I'm shooting. I'm shooting. Wait, where the fuck did he go? I'm shooting. I'm shooting. Back alley. Back alley. Nice. No. Shoot, 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 shoot. He went there. Closet. He went there. Closet. Can you shoot me anywhere on you? I'm slaying fire here. Look at my alley door. I see. I'm checking my PB. I'm checking my PB. Alley door. Alley door. Okay. Draws the alley door. He came in. He came in. Okay. They're going A. Yeah, he's on B. Back fire. Yeah, they're they're gonna be keep fighting A. Is that our sponsor? Dub, dub, dub. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm dead here. Dub, dub, dub. Okay. Dub and fire. Dub and fire. And one B. Okay. Back left. Back. Back. We got it. Nice. Nice. It's MP5. Top P5. P1. Top P1 one shot. P1 really one shot. And in point. I'm taking steps. But, yo, it's little docks, little docks, little docks, little docks. I'm taking steps right now. I'm going top tower. He knows here. I'm secret. He knows I'm secret. Remember, guys, work front and go up steps here. Yep. Yeah, back alley, back alley. I don't okay. see him. One shot, back alley. One shot. I'm going to stay out there. I'm going to stay out there. Back alley. Don't fly him. Alley, he ran back in your back drops. He's done. Okay, next. I'm watching secret for a second. What's going on? I have secret. Pretty sure he's long. Nate, there's side. 2v5 on me. Stay down. I got your push. I'm warning alley. Signs of life from Boston Breeze. Oh. They're opening up here as well. Managing to get the kill down. Capsule doing everything he can, but it's Envoy who slows their progression for just a few seconds. That first stick is still coming through and Methods holding down the fort. It's been contested. He's still alive somehow. Reinforcements desperately flooding through to help Methods. Fantastic work here from the side of Boston Breach is not done yet, though Thieves will clear them out, if only momentarily. Nero still lingering around the point. Thieves need a nice break if they can get a hold of control here again. This is still dual for them. TJ is the only one who can find a kill. He will be dealt with as well. So still for Thieves, not too terrible of a position. But what Breach did really well there was just have Capsule survive over towards back ticket. And then from there, they start to push from different directions. Very, very well played. Kenny now just trying to put himself in that nuisance position. From here, he can watch certain things and flank around the team if they do try and make a push through tickets. Octane and Koda trying to lock it down from inside the site. Three kills go their way, and momentarily, it's only TJ up. You gotta be careful, that's actually a big win from TJ. It alleviates a little bit of the pressure. You can see Thieves slowly but surely trying to get into ticket uh -huh. and push them all the way back. But Boston haven't lost that quite yet. They can find some trades. The option is still open for them. And we're just trying to stay alive. You can see they're already trying to find him. It will be Capsule with the shots from behind. Kenny will find one from up top three. He gets taken down as well. His neighbor in prime position gets a bit of bad time. And so everything has to be from the front for the Boston Bridge. Only 20 seconds to go, Bryce. They've got to go now. Draza, very important kill if he makes it, but no, he does actually somehow. I thought Methods had that one locked in. They're trying to jump in. TJ Halley is in at the same time. Nero going to find a kill on the outside. It's the last hurrah here for Boston. And they just only have Nero left, but he has to dive. He has to go in and stop the clock, and he does, and he's cut down. Boston on the cusp of finding something, but weren't able to win the gunfights they needed. 2-0 to LA Thieves. The over-silver lining for Boston is they should be able to hold a defense this time around. 
they can just tighten those bolts a little bit. Close, but no cigars. Kind of the theme around that round there. A couple of occasions that they found a little bit of purchase, but it's just those final kills that just went Thieves' way. He was actually out of lives completely. That was a 3v4 at one stage. Maybe, well, I've actually just been a 3v5, but either way. It's tight. So, Boston, let's see what you can do here. Last time Road is a really good start to the round from the side of Thieves and Envoys cut them wide open through the middle. And now they can make this push over towards B. Does he help help, help from his team as well as Capsule is the only one who can answer back? But Thieves have some purchase inside of B. Well, they're feeling good. Let's see if they're sounding good. LA Thieves, time for listening. LA Thieves hitting him with the heat once again and it's a little bit bad for Boston the Thieves are in they are winning in the kill feed in quite dominant fashion Envoy is having a ridiculous game we talked about Octane map number one, but the S&D and the control are all Envoy as he keeps on cooking, but it might not be enough. You can see there's so much time remaining and now, and now Boston Breach basically have to be flawless. I, I was just watching, just stunned at Envoy walking around and people are just evaporating before his eyes. It's a substantially better showing out of every single member of this team. This. If unless Boston can pull off what it would be a small miracle. This has been one of the most convincing performances we've seen in a long, long time from the side of Thieves. Nero will find two. It will matter very, very little as Meth is now left all alone. Blow it up. I, I, that, that's come around a lot here recently, Brycey. But I think Thieves just blew Boston Breach off the map. That was absolutely ridiculous. And that is so much more like it from the LA Thieves. Where has that been? Because that was sublime. I... That was that was a very one-sided series. 100 point club and a half point. Flawless S&D, flawless control. 9-0 in rounds. Octane, math number one. Envoy, math number two and three. But dominant. Doesn't really even begin to talk it down. Draza went 23 and 15. We didn't even get a chance to talk about him. They won both I mean, attacks. Barely, Thieves, I, I barely spoke a sentence, Brycey. The series <laughs> is taking about five minutes. Like, okay, we'll, we'll give Thieves applaudits, but it takes two to tango in this one. Brycey and Boston Breeze just absolutely capitulated at times. I, I mean, so so many moments where they're just getting... I don't, I don't, it's hard to break down, isn't it? Because it's like, well, what are they doing? What, what are they doing? Nothing is the answer to the question. Every important gunfight that had to go the way did not. Every single moment where they had to have somebody clutch up, it didn't happen. To get to those moments where those clutches had to happen, things are falling apart left, right, and center. Boston Breach after that map number one, clearly just not in the game. And then to get six to zero, to two to zero down in the control. Yeah, good luck coming back from that one. Blowout, that's it. I, it's, uh, as I one side know. of the Boston series, maybe not being yet. up to par today, and LA Thieves being another level. No, I don't think anybody predicted 
coming in and seeing this result or seeing any of this coming through. I pick Breach. I think I pick Breach. <laughs> I pick Breach. Because the I was convinced were... Breach were going to come back at most of the points through this series, but LA Thieves were different today. Just, they were different. But Thieves were so bad in the last series. They got smoked off CL. Like, fully smoked. Not as bad as that, but smoked. And it was just not a good performance whatsoever to then come out and do that against a team like Boston, who, yes, okay, maybe they're not, they're not a top four team, but they are very much in and amongst that pack. They're on that bubble that we've been talking about so often. And to do that to them, it's going to give them so much confidence. And if they can continue to play like that, they are a serious threat for a lot of teams. But that's where the, the issue lies, Bryce, is we know that they, well, maybe we haven't known they've been capable of that, but they've been capable of being a lot better than what they've been showing. And clearly that is the case. That is as one-sided as you're likely to see. That, that, was, that was boys against men there. That was convincing. Very convincing. I still, I still don't really I'm understand not sure how what that happened. happened. I don't understand what's happened. There is no, there is no way to dictate a series like that. Realistically, like we had a hundred point club, a six zero and a three zero. Uh, kind of unbelievable in the end. And I am looking forward to finding out what our desk make of it. So, bro, hey guys, <laughs> I am they got mind cooked, blown. Boy. Dude, they got cooked. Kentucky fried. That's it was, the it was... worst loss I've seen <laughs> yeah. this whole year. You know what it's like? It's almost as if taking a look at the map bands anyway. It's like Boston came into this game looking to lose. I don't know about you guys. I still would not take a team like LA, LA Thieves with Octane's current form to a place like Avutu. I mean, it wasn't like just like one of their best maps in the series of hard points. It was both of their best maps. Eight and four in Gavutu, nine and four on Tuscan. That was First your game four. Case. Should we have even gotten that far? Obviously, we didn't. But like, the fact that they played Gavutu map one on a team that had a recent role change putting Kenny in a sub means that there are basically three ARs on this team and you're going to open up the series with that? Do you guys remember that crazy stat line in the beginning of the season with LA Thieves? It was like, do not chow them on Gavutu? Do not chow them on Gavutu. Like, it's just literally no, not listen, that hard. I agree with what you guys are saying, but I <laughs> nah, honestly, I, mean, I don't think a map mattered. Yeah, like, I Thieves were moving. <laughs> different today like the way octane was playing on that first map was just beautiful he was challenging everything winning every single gunfight it was a collapse on the side of the boston breach and let's yep. talk about that search and destroy Hello. some of the offensive Dude. moves that we saw la thieves making clearing and uh, pushing through p2 getting the first blood and then going over towards b the double coordinated nade over the b bomb site to get the first blood on the ramp i mean that is that's next Double level. perfects right? in that yeah, series, that's, by that's the way. Just... Envoy and the score. I, wa I want to know what was in that folder that we saw Octane look at. Like, <laughs> mid-round at the end, he's like, oh, look at this folder. And then he hands it off to Draws, and Draws is like, oh, yeah, that's a good folder. He shots it, and then just 6-0 across the board. Uh, Envoy was just pushing lanes for free. Like, he just ran up mid-map. He got into P2 and was just like, oh, I'm just going to shoot a couple players in the back. I'm here. I'm going to fry you. Like, hey. no, I didn't know. No, I know. Heading into the series, LA Thieves actually picked up an assistant coach. Can we give a, a round of applause for Shane, by the That's way? Ma Shane. Making a difference That's for the Los Angeles Shane. Thieves. By the way, we have a small <laughs> play of the game, and it is the sweep insertion. Oh, can we do the whole map? <laughs> yeah. We get the whole Highlight map. reel? This map was as long as the whole series. Dude, you, you know, like, it's, <laughs> I, I'm happy watching this, like, when, when I see LA Thieves playing well, but then I just feel so bad for Breach. Like, this series was yeah. an absolute breakdown across every single map, all three oh, game modes. Like, these guys really. <laughs> got run over and it makes it hard to like sit here and be like okay so what do they have to fix well quite literally everything uh for this boston breach team uh you know you look at nero and capstone in this series you're expecting them to have a big one right being two strong smgs nope that's not the case they still remain a little bit inconsistent and Banished. in this series it was no different so uh, they really need to go review this vod man and it's stuff. it's a hard vod to review too though right yeah, because a lot so of situations crazy. it was just like you just needed to win that one like you made the right play but you didn't win like the most important gunfight that you needed to win on the search and destroy it just felt like the Players that we are used to see getting in control on Berlin, like Nero, like Cap, they were getting blooded. They were just getting put in these unfortunate situations too, where crap. LA Thieves clearly did review on all the Berlin S and D that Boston had played and just countered them every single time. Every time. And by the way, we actually have a video put up from Lando, one of our casters. He wasn't <laughs> he wasn't commenting, but he was definitely in the action. Let's let's actually hear what he had to say about the human turd himself. <laughs> Human turret. <laughs> he is the human turret. This guy's vibing, dude. Oh my goodness. He can't be stopped. The human turret. 
<laughs> he loves that, dude. That video is that's the best tweet I've seen. It's such a dad thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right. And by the way, we have a game fuel. Um, I'll do game fuel victory spotlight with the one and only Octane. Let's get him on screen, Octane. I gotta say it, oh. man. When um, by the way. Great win, that was so fast. But um, when you were struggling in the season, I was questioning, like, what is wrong with Octane? He needs to pick it up. Map one, you fried. The whole series, you fried him, you cooked him. Now, you're heading into Major 3. The LA Thieves are looking as good, if not even better than the way you guys looked in Stage 1. What are your personal expectations and goals for Major 3? Obviously, other than just winning first place, right? Uh, I don't really think there's another goal that needs to be uh, a thing. Um, we got back-to-back 3-0 -back the last couple of matches before this one, so it's good to be on the other side of that. Uh, this is probably the best one we've had this year. Um, granted, it's against a struggling breach, but I think that we all just absolutely fried as best we could. Um, I just want to give a quick shout-out to Shane, too. That guy is yes. next-level <laughs> coach. Yeah, no, we could obviously see it in this 3-0. I mean, you look like a completely different team. Uh, Sam, what's in the folder? What's in the folder, Sam? Don't worry about the folder. What is Listen, in Shane, the folder, Shane has, Sam? Us on a, Shane has us on a regiment. You know, it's um, the, the philosophy is if you write something down, you remember it a little bit easier. So that is, uh, that's what we're doing over here at the LA Thieves camp. We're Keep trying it every day. You know? We get back-to-back 3 0 We got to shift the, the way we practice and stuff like that a little bit. So we're, we're working on it. Uh, Octane, for you, you had a crazy performance in this series. Like, what did you change headed into today? Because I haven't seen you play like that in a couple years, my brother. <laughs> yeah, I saw, your, uh, I saw your tweet. It was like 2018 Octane. Um, I don't know, man. The, the map, you, you just get into those cycles, and I'm sure you, you're familiar. Yeah. It's just where you feel like you don't lose a gunfight, and you get every god timing possible. And that's kind of how it felt. I didn't know how many times I died after the map was over, but I knew it was single digits. Um, <laughs> it, was just, it was just one of those blunders for him. There's not really much to explain about it. Hey, yo, Octay, show some love for the fans that are heading out to Toronto for Major 3 coming up very soon. And give them a reason yes, to hurt. cheer as loud as they can for y'all. Dude, uh, I know, guys, we've been struggling a little bit. I do apologize. I promise. I pr wholeheartedly promise we're working <laughs> our ass off. Um, I know that we're, we have some up and downs lately, but I can assure you the amount of hours that our team's putting in lately. Um, hopefully we'll see some success because I really do think that the, the effort is is tripled, quadrupled, whatever number you want to use over the last couple of weeks. So uh, once again, shout out to Shane. That guy is, sorry if you can find me fucking crazy at his job. <laughs> yeah, hey, Octane, kill with the dust. Hey, don't hopefully do well, man. Just do well. You guys We're got gonna, this, Hey, man. Right? You know, it's uh, Call of Duty's a day-to-day -day game. Our team's been a little inconsistent, but I think if we stick where we're at right now with our mindset and practice regimen and how we're approaching the game, I think that uh, I think we're going to show up. For that sure. mental fortitude is legit, man. I'll see you in Toronto. You take it easy. Take it easy, brother. All right, so, um, once again, okay, it's one thing when the devs, you know, give the due diligence, say, hey, shout out to the coach. We see it different from the gameplay, but we don't know behind the scenes. He gave Shane a, a shout out like yeah. three times. Instantly, instantly was like, Shane has completely changed the way we approach things. And to have instant results as well, like to a coach's standpoint, to automatically get signed in your first series as a coach on that team, and they 3-0 in that fashion with how much they were struggling in all game modes across the board, that is so typical. And your stock has just, I mean, it's going through Pew. the roof. I tell you what, I'm a believer completely in LA Thieves now. It's been really back and forth, but off of that series, off of their vouching, their coach that much, off of the performance and the speech that we just got, I'm okay, LA Thieves, okay. If Shane has a million fans, I'm one of them. Name was <laughs> anything you want to say to wrap up that series right there? Uh, that was incredible. I, I can't believe how they were able to close that out in 3-0 fashion. i just hoping that they can continue it. Yes, when man. we see the Thieves like happy like that in the player camps, not being down, right, that is when they have success. So keep in like they started off hot in that series when they start off and they're down in some of these maps and they yeah. lose that first map they tend to keep on going downwards so it'll be when they face adversity if they're able to stay consistent and win we'll learn that at the major and they're facing adversity head on but check this out ladies and gentlemen we have one more series left to go hey but credit is due where it's deserved right shout out to the team that you guys called a hoodie or what Los Angeles Thieves are absolutely killing it right now and with the big win like that over the Boston Breach the consistency seems like it's there but coming up next we have NYSL versus Optic Texas, and I can't wait. We'll catch you guys on the other side.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Game Fuel. Victory in a can. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we made it all the way to the end of the day. We have one last series to go, and I'm hoping that this one is a banger, and rightfully so, right? Sure. We have Optic Texas facing off against the New York Subliners, and both teams have having a really good time so far, especially in YSL after that Pro-Am Classic. And by the way, shameless plug, um, the eSportsAwards.com. Make sure you go in there and vote for your favorite analyst. I voted for Ali and Nameless. I have my mom do it for me as well. You can do it the same way, and I'm um, your favorite casters. But let's jump into the matchup. In my myself facing off against Optic Texas, and the only thing I could think about right now, Ali, is the opportunity that the Minnesota Rocker had against the Atlanta Faze yesterday, okay? They went against one of the best teams in the game, and they said, you know what? We're not going to fall flat. We're not just going to get 3 0 We're going to take the game into our own hands and win and show the world that we're the best out there. It's time for NYSL to try to do the same. No, I'm right there with you. And what's interesting across the board about this matchup, when it comes to New York Subliners, they actually have very similar game mode stats across the board when it comes to Optic, specifically yeah. in control. Optic is 7-3 and three in the last 10 control. New York Subliners is 8-2 and two as mm -hmm. well when it comes to the hard points. Optic is 6-4, and four, whereas on the flip side, New York Subliners is 7-3. and three. So these are two big dogs going head-to-head. -head. But again, my biggest question mark is going to be on the slang on the side of New York. Kills are not everything, but when it is two talented teams like these, these two going up head to head, it's going to play a big part. When it comes to the game, field keys of victory, nameless what you got. You got to prove the hard point improvements are real versus best team in the game. NYSL since starter prime 13 and 3 in hard point optic 5 and 0 this stage. We've seen how good New York is at hard point. Everybody plays the role perfect, and most of the time, everybody's above 1.0, so the slaying is there, right? But this is optic. It's a different beast than keep up the elite teamwork versus optic. So, what I just said, NYSL number one in non traded death percentage during major three qualifiers at 67%, which is just phenomenal. And then you need a little bit more more slang for your main air versus optic crim 6.88 kd during major three qualifiers and honestly in a series like this stats kind of get thrown out the window because i was gonna the, say that like this team has sort of been on a, a momentum and, and a run in crim versus scump storyline you know how much crim is prepared for this series he's gonna come with that fire I, I will say this you know crim stats right there i mean yeah people can talk about it and criticize it but it's the leadership that he brings to this team he brings it all together and that's why they were able to win an event this year but the thing is is he gonna be able to keep up with the speed and the likes of a dashy on the board. That's going to be an issue. And speaking of dashy, nameless when it comes to Optic Texas, this is a team, the only team in the CDL, by the way, where when it comes to interview time, we look at each other and say, we've asked so many questions, we don't even know what to say. This team is perfect, and it doesn't even matter who the fourth is. Absolutely. I mean, they pick up Prolu, and I really think the, the biggest difference is, like, Prolu coming in with some of the search and destroy calls, their searches look even better, better. right? Like, yep. so coordinated. And then the improvements that they make time and time again, like, I, I talked about it in top of show when we, when we talked about Optic, but I'll talk about it again. The improvements that they made going into that Berlin control, they look so much better in that map mode combination. Now that just adds all three controls they're just going to be dominant on, right? So you're going to have to really be on your money game when you're playing this team. So for Optic, they have an edge versus everybody. Pro loot popping off once again. He's going to need to do it versus New York. 
And when it comes to the game, he'll kick us to victory. I mean, it's just Prolo, right? He's been playing out of his mind. He just has to keep the ball rolling and lock down the Berlin s and Optic is aimed for this season on Berlin and winning 56% of the rounds. That is second overall. And stay informed with Tuscan Control. You know what? Chop this. Just keep doing what you've been doing, Optic Texas. That is your keys to victory because you have been dominant this entire stage three. All right. And when it comes to the Mandu Game Fuel feature player of the game, you guys already know the deal. It's going to be Shotzi, one of the guys that I think is 1A to Selium's 1B at being the best player in the game. Shotzi is just absurd. I was, uh, I saw a clip he tweeted out, like, where he's just hitting this crazy the movement on Bow Cage. Like, the guy's movement is unreal. He has a knack for getting behind enemy lines, getting first bloods in search and destroy. He is the most influential player in the game. Like, he's just a weapon, man. And having this guy on your team makes the game easier. I think it's um, easy to say and it's simple. Everybody has to be in agreement. Instead, so Shotzi has the high highest functioning motor out of any sub player in the game. Whenever you see him with the movement, you just know magic's gonna happen, right? But I'm ready to see magic happen right now. Nameless, what you got to say? I will say, on the opposite side of that, you have Hydra, who's yeah. hungry and is trying to be yes. that guy. And like, yes. Hydra is a beast. So this is gonna be an interesting one. He's gonna try to match up with a player like Shotzi. I hope it happens. All right, let's send this over to Miles and Chance. Fellas, Hydra versus Shotzi. This should be beautiful, right? This is going to be a banger. There's no other way to put it. I mean, Chance, it's such an exciting moment. Chance had to change his shirt. Had to. Yeah, I mean, it was ridiculously hot. I'm not going to lie. The light's a little bit brighter. So, hey, we're trying to, you know, keep it cool before this match starts. Because, honestly, the one we just had was scorching hot. Like, Miles, we casted the Tuscan Control earlier. That was 16 minutes long. The last series in total was 21 minutes. So, it is very quick just to get to this series. But I think the fans will be happy for it. Very exciting indeed. We have got a wonderful matchup for you, ladies and gentlemen. Our Mountain Dew marquee match is about to begin. Optic Texas, New York Subliners. There's a lot of history behind these teams. There's a lot of stories here, but we'll look at the maps and modes first. And hey, it's a bit of a run back of the Toronto versus London Ravens series from earlier today. Double Berlin, double Tuscan, and Bocage to close out the series. Should we have to go the full distance? And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, I want to go the full distance in this one. Let's see how we go, though, Chance, into Berlin. Let's touch upon, I mean, look, Krim up against his old teammates, his old org. You name it, man. It's all happening in this matchup. I mean, he has won a world championship for the combination of orgs that he is playing against. He has won those world championships with players he is playing against. Make no mistake, there is a bevy of storylines just with Krim slash C6 slash Krim 6 slash whatever else you want to talk about alone. And you know, this is the team he wants to beat the most, especially when you're going against the number one team in the game. Straight into the hard point we go. Hydra, the man first in, meets an angry scum who puts him in a bed. Kismet is going to get the time for now and again. Berlin, hard point number one here. It's not an easy one to hold time on. Typically, what? One well, of the team with a favorable side just edges out the other. But for now, a bit of a back and forth we go. As the opening time's gone down, the kills are all going through here. And Kismet, big win on a pro loot. That's going to be a solid amount of time now going the way of NYSL. Hey, and speaking of Kismet, by the way, I mean, I know the desk already touched on it a little bit, but this is the true test for your SMG duo to figure out exactly how good you are. Because Scump and Shanti, they have to be the best in the game. So this is a, a pure square up sort of match. And I'd say for Lynn Hardpoint, one of the best maps New York could possibly get through. They are 4-1 okay. on it okay. since they've gotten this roster together. And hey, this is not a bad start at all. Hydra getting a couple pieces and, well, New York trying to win that rotation. Yeah, not at all. New York subline is coming out hot here in Berlin. Probably on the outside of the map is going to get cut down. Hard point number two now up. Mail room. Hard point in the hands of the New York subline. Is scum now on the entry. Good shots through the front. His teammates making his way through as well. A nice bit of work from Dash. He's going to be brought down on the outside. Probably now to the hill. Again, nothing but kills. Back and forth. Either side. Hydra wins a big one. Nameless. Touched upon in the desk. He's an absolute beast. Now, though, to our Mountain Dew featured player. A beast in his own right. It's Shotzi. He's just waiting for his moment to strike as well. You see Dash getting a pick. Well, make it two in the feed. So move towards the hill and poor Hydra is tagged up as one shot as one shot could be. And the teamwork is there from Optic. But while all of this has been transpired, New York actually get the spawns over towards new. Shotzi looking for the opening. There's a potential one-on-one -on -one gunfight to find Damn. the break. And Shotzi gets the first. His teammates pick up a couple. And Shotzi might get shot in the back, or maybe the trades are in. The teamwork again, perfect. Optic flipped those spawns to P3, and that is the moment that they needed as they are down by about 25. 
and they do a good job of getting some old time over towards the old point but now the new one is up and they've got the first dibs on the seconds now coming through dashy cut down through mid map a team kill there from hydra will slow the push in the new york subliners but it's kismet new kid on the block new kid in the team but he ain't no kid he's most players daddies but scump puts him down guns a third that's massive stuff out of the king hard point still in the hands of texas and now though spawns in the back for new york yeah, it doesn't matter though. Scump's got the cross with the MP40 of all weapons, but if you got Beamer, you can take him down. And even while he is getting back down, still making plays. His team though trying Jesus. to fight inside the point. They've actually lost it. It was Scump by himself, but he couldn't get number six. And Subliners, well, they get those close spawns and eventually use that to build that pressure and break through. Final 10 seconds, actually, maybe not going to go their way. Number six, Prolu's fighting for it. He wins the fight inside the hill as after winning rotation. So maybe just a, a cheeky little play to strip away an extra few seconds. Yeah, great job there. Subliners, though, still maintain the lead for a moment, though. Big wins now. Got to come through from Karim. Hydra's already in from behind. Sneaky, as you like. Manages to catch one out. Prolu's up next. Will he spot him from up top? I think Hydra looked too fast. He didn't see him. And this is going to be an awkward fight, but a good one. Nice teamwork there from the subliners. Hard point now going to be in their hands. They've got to get the time. Not an easy one to hold. Krim, the old goat, stays alive. Forward you go now into the point. This has got to be a solid hold from the subliners. Uh, Paco and Paul just making moves right there. Again, he called it out. Just Hydra playing with his life and gets the sport from the team. And that is a rotation win. Keep in mind, Optic, they had the fullest of setups on this P4 hill. It does not last them long at all. And now you had Skump go on a six. Well, here's Paul on a five. In the oh. power position of all power positions. One kill away from the glide. Oh. Cannot deliver. <laughs> well, he catches hands, though. Keep in mind, subliners caught all that hill time. They have built themselves a sizable lead. Good hands from the subliners now. Time's going their way still. P5's up. Hard point to get time on. And I mean that very sincerely. Hydra now on a five spree himself. Will he be able to acquire streaks? Not an easy thing to do against players of this caliber. But for now, looking across the stats, a four spree for Krim there. He's managed to turn his game around wonderfully. Over to the old goat. Makes it a five. Beautiful shots again. Time now ticking. Can Hydra get his sixth kill? No, Scump's going to be out like a ghost. Gone. Hydra may be able to get it. We'll see how it goes, though. But for now, the hard point time has gone the way of the New York subliners, and it has been a lovely look from them. Crim Spree comes to a close over towards, you know, back to P5. Final 30 seconds remaining here. I mean, look, those are important wins for Optic just to sort of get those spawns for new. But even on P5, they just lost a, a pretty decent chunk of time. And I suppose they are fighting back. They're inside the point, trying to keep control of these spawns. And those are a couple of big wins over towards the train side of the map. So you'll be able to get set up for new. Working at what a 60 point deficit. I mean, quite frankly, one good money hill on this new hill, and they can be right back in this game. That's the beauty of the hard point. Scum's getting things going. Four spree now for the king. That was three dead momentarily for the New York subliners. Back over to Shotzi, Mountain Dew featured player. Brought down for a moment. We'll see how he goes in the next life. But for now, Scump is absolutely ripping heads. That's his fifth kill in a row, and he's hungry for blood. Looking to get those spawners now for the New York subliners. Krim. Reads him like a book, puts him down over the dashy, trying to lock side the outer side of the hard point now. This is the train side, second set is up, and so far, so good, Optic Texas. Yeah, you see, though, the pressure's coming on. Oh, in. oh my god, pressure, thy name is Kismet. Flies on through, and now Prolu, last man standing, he gets a kill, but he was surrounded. And again, a full 60 gets you right back in the game, and admittedly, they chopped the lead down to 40, but Subliners right back inside the point. Scrap time appearing like it's gonna go their way, and frankly, they're getting all the kills, so the lead is gonna be right back to 60. Shanti gets hunted down, and you have all of the pressure in the world. Yes, Kismet falls, but right now, Optic, they do not have much space to breathe. 50 point gain right now. Subline is still with the lead in the lungs. We need to get some air in them right now for Optic Texas. Krim on a four brings down his old teammate. Over to Pro Loot now. Finally finds the gunny there to take care of Krim. With that now, you still have subliners in control of the hard point. Three man hit now through the front side. Hydra's on the flank though. Hydra's on the flank. Here comes the first. Lining them up. Here's the second. Hydra keeps the kills going. The pinch is all good. Subliners will retain control. I mean, good lord. I mean, we're talking about like some of the best players in the game right now. Dashy barely passed double negative. Shotzi negative five as well. Woo, I mean, God two of your star you. players struggling. And Hydra and Paul, not so much. And even Kismet has been frying across the board for subliners. Straight up out slaying their opponent. Scrap time potentially going to go their way. But more importantly, those spawns. I mean, subliners, maybe not a stranglehold on the left side of the map. But I think Hydra just got blessed with some timing. So while Optic are going to collect the scrap on P2, uh, I mean, subliners have this new hill swarmed. 
They do, and they sniff out Shotzi in the back line as well. So the shenanigans will come to a close. It's shots range from Pro Loot to keep the hard point that little bit safer now for Optic Texas. Final few moments go down at P2. Now the approach towards the next. It's office time, and Crim6 taking care of business gets the two of them. And Scum's down low, dashy by the docks. All angles covered right now. It's got to be pure gunny from Optic from here on out. I mean, look, at least the good news for Optic is they have the close spawn, so you can be quick to get back inside of the hill. And Hydra, funnily enough, this is normally where he's in prime territory, but now it's him and Paul again trying to work together. But Optic again, sort of deja vu, but on the flip sides, they get the close spawns and allow them to bully themselves inside the hill. By the way, second five spree of the game for Scum. And damn, well, New York subline is decent lead, decent hold here. 22 seconds left. Let's hear how they hold it. Quick listen in, New York subliners. I'm going to mid statue, Seth. He's going to secret, 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 right, secret, yeah, secret. I'm all the way back trains, okay? Yeah, heard, heard, heard. I'm going to go to the left. I'm not bumping you out of time, okay? Yep, you're good. One left. Don't block trains whenever you come off a bolt. Go P5, okay? Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. going to spawn yeah, yeah. through if we block both. Yep. One back there, back there, back there, Dashie. Look up, look up. I should have stayed alive, bro. He's back there, back there. All good, all good. I'm in the back, I'm in the back. Try to stay alive, Paco. Yep. Stop P2, stop P2. You know where you want to know? Stop P2, meet P5. I don't see him here. Meet P5. Meet P5. Meet P5. He's in P2. He's gonna be, yeah, you know, ignore that guy. Ignore that guy. Yeah, one back bricks. Uh, yo, uh, from bricks, from bricks. He's top three, I think. He's right under you, from bricks. Top three, top three. From bricks, then. Nice job. One top three. Top three, top three. Top three. Top three. I don't know where we went. Top three. Dirt, 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 dirt. Yo, he's back up. Top three, top three. Good fucking play, Nice job. Yo, looking for pros. Good time. Nice. Good time. I'm gonna get top red. Oh, no, no. Bakari, Bakari weak. Yeah, I'm getting top red. Bakari weak. He's just holding, holding. I'm doing it. Wasn't BP5, okay? No, no, no. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, he's there. I'm getting wall banged. I'm getting wall banged. Hold on, I gotta back up. I'm pulling back. Top B2, top B2. He's in B5. No, I'm getting up. Shouting sidewalks. Sidewalk, sidewalks. Gump weak on the on the crane. Weak on the crane. Yeah, crane, crane. He's talking to me. He's talking to me. Yo, yo, we got off the okay? Alright, dude. Probably one shot, no. There's three there. There's three there. Yeah, one went in the crane. Yeah, one's B5. He's got the jump. I have him. Shotsy, yo. Shotsy's close up. Train on me. He's on the head. Shotsy's close up. 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 Shotsy's close a lot of love there for the New York subliners and the listening, and they are looking absolutely brilliant so far in Berlin, Chance. And Kerm can be aggressive, but he is not wrong about the plays that Kismet was making. And frankly, the plays that are going to win them this game. 15 points, and they're going to be able to do this on P5. Optic, I mean, I know they fought back a little bit last go around on this hill. Maybe a little bit of fight in them once again, but it seems like this is almost victory lap time as, again, just the slang numbers for the subliners have been absurd. Still, that is not quite over just yet. 10 seconds now for the win. Subline is swarming the point. It all comes down to dash. He's got to go big on point. No, he can't. It's Hydra with a rat in the back. That could be it now. The final few seconds. No one's close enough. No nades, no nothing. And Paul, the dagger in the back of Shotzi. Map number one goes to New York. I do. They came to play as well. I mean, make no mistake. Berlin hardpoint is best case scenario for New York subliners to like get through in this series. It has certainly not been optics finest, but Either way, I mean, that's fairly dominant. Crim's over there, light it up in the kill feed. We see Hydra picking up pieces time and time again. Him and Paul X had quite a few good moments. And uh, I mean, I think the big question for me was like the sub duo. Granted, it's Berlin. There was a ton of automatons out for both these players. But uh, I mean, Kismet also performed just top notch. That is across the board. Impressive stuff for the subliners and a, a pretty comfortable Berlin win. A banger, an absolute banger. Not if you're an Optic Texas fan, obviously, but the starting things off with a bang certainly is indeed the New York subliner. Stats across the board, pretty good. Look at the highlights now, and it was a lot of love for Kismet. His opening break here, this three was an absolute sweet one. I think he does manage to get one more out of this before he brought down. So again, all things considered, beautiful stuff. Scum sprees as well, everything looked good. No one truly able to acquire those streaks though, but man, big rotation fights, massive work at range. But in the end, New York subliners, they were the ones in the kills department really putting in the work. And I think if you were to do a, a hill by hill breakdown of the game, fairly comparable on most of the hills, a little bit back and forth. Obviously, subliners are going to have the edge on a few of them. But P4, they set themselves apart. Like the, the first go around, they broke optics, like set up down and basically turned P4 into a money hill. And almost the exact same thing happened the next go around when we heard the comms. And I um, mean, Krim was again, he was on point. Kismet's just making plays, picks up the big two piece, clears out what they call back dirt, dirt, excuse me, or like the back train section. And uh, again, P4, they truly just ran the show. Yeah, it was a lot of really important kills. And again, Kismet, a true playmaker for the squad here. Krim's breeze as well, pretty spicy. 
I mean, Optic, what's going wrong, Charles? We saw Dashi really struggling in the kills department. He was not able to compete in those long range fights. Obviously, if you can't compete in the long range fights, your subs have got to have to take different routes. They can't make their way through the more open, safer parts of the map. Changes the way you play the game. That scoreline, though, that's a big one, man. That's a statement from the subliners to get things going. But relax, friends. Don't quite put your shoes on yet. We're staying on Berlin. Search and Destroy coming up just after this one. And then we head to our double dose of Tuscan. Chance, Search and Destroy. New York subliners, Optic Texas. What does the crystal ball say? Well, I would just say for the map one, right? It is the only map where there is a clear cut edge when it comes to like the map record. Like keep in mind, uh, you had Optic that were what? Five and six, now five and seven on Berlin Hardpoint. New York subliners on the year, we saw that the record was seven and four. That's including the time where they were literally not capable as a team of winning a hard point because with this roster, four and one, now five and one on that map. So they've been dominant on Berlin. That is where Optic has struggled the most. And I mean, I think the score line just reflects that to a T. After this point though, incredibly comparable across the board. I would say the next like strongest advantage would just be Optic generically in the control, especially so on Tuscan. But outside of that, like it, it is anyone's game. Yeah, it's, this is going to be a fun one. A little tense there for the boys in the Optic camp. We'll see now how they deal with adversity, because I feel like, I mean, this is the most difficult matchup they've had so far with Prolet on the roster, right? It's been smooth sailing for the team. You finally get a little bit of an undulation in the road, and how bad does that bump hit the squad? We'll find out for the subliners. Man, these boys have been through hell. They have been eating the bad stuff all year long, and finally have managed to find their success. So. We'll see, though, if this turnaround for them will be so fantastic. Subliners versus Optic Texas now going into the search and destroy. Let's take a look at their top performers on either side of the board. Who are the champions chance for their respective teams? Oh, that's just comedy. The, the fact that Prolet's on there. I mean, his KD is completely absurd. So obviously, Paul X has many more maps under his belt to sort of even out the stats just a little bit. But uh, I think even on like Berlin SD specifically, Paul X also has a disturbingly good KD. And I think Berlin is why Prolet's stats are so someone plated because he had like the, the 10 or 11 in one performance whatever it was so certainly players that pay a great deal of attention to certainly a place where pro loot is going to be happy uh and i know miles last time we casted a series uh, for this optic team we talked about how pro loot in his interview when he was talking about search he's like some of these pros are just scared to play the game mode i'm just going to run at them well i think new york is a team that will not have fear in their hearts well, we said the same thing about Atlanta Phase, it's bro. It's what happened there? Absolutely true. And what happened there? They got absolutely dinged 3 0, bro. Anyway, whatever. It was, was the 3 0? No, it was 3 3 1, 3. I forget. Whatever. Either way, they lost it. And I think, what was uh, the, the game mode that Optic lost in that one? Uh, it wasn't Berlin Control. It, it was, was Berlin State. It was Bokaj SD, wasn't it? Bokaj just did it. Damn it. It man. was the SD. That's all right. I'm and Phase did run at them. They did run straight at them. <laughs> You're not wrong, fam. You're not wrong. But here on Berlin, things are a little diffy. This should be a very, very interesting matchup now. An opportunity for Optic Texas to bounce back and level the series so far. But for the time being, I think we're all going to A for Optic Texas. Uh, and this is Paul X by his lonesome trying to fend off all three of these players. Point. And so far, so good. The trade well hasn't come through yet. Well, there it goes. And that'll be the clearance. But Kismet has actually found himself in a very interesting what? spot. Interest thy name is Gunny. Takes him down. Man advantage, New York. Excuse me, goes by many names. Right now, he is, what, aggression? He's gunny? He's got it all, man. The man's got quite the monikers there. 3v2 now. Dashi and Scump backed up. Working together, though. So, at the time being, that bomb is going to make its way over towards B slowly. Kismet's got a corner. Hydra has the top side of the map covered. Hydra should spot him. Hydra's got eyes in. There's the bullets. And he's going to be able to send Kismet forward. Nades are there. The subliners have shown up. And they have got Scumpy pinned. We're going after the ankles. Oh. He somehow got... Whoa! Oh, my God! Wait a minute. Uh, bro, you, are, you somehow you are, got two. <laughs> you are two bullets away from being on an all-time highlight reel. Oh, uh, Scuffy's oh, montage that he's building. But hey, bro, they take care of business. They get it done. You know, that's a round win. Just laugh a little bit, shake it off. You know, no big deal. And yeah, don't get me wrong. The kill on the pro was insane, but Scump nearly took on all three of those players and killed them all. I mean, do, if we have a POV of that, it'd be great to see it later, but sweet christmas that could have been something special either way the round goes to the new york subliners and now the bomb goes to b uh, and this is honestly like two kind of comedic like counter strats right uh team stacks uh a on defense and the team is simply not there and well 
you at least get to trade out the first couple kills and that is bombed down you have every single player on optic basically watching this cross by the way kismet spots every single one of them though and gets the next kill and should be able to collect that bomb as well the mad dog wants to get out because look at where hydra is already at he is through a but this is so yeah shotsy's in the back he gets caught all of a sudden dashes in between them spots Ooh. out hydra but can't take him down in the gunfight the gunny there in full force for the subliners the phenom we've expected it of him for so long and he's delivering three to nothing thus far in the search and destroy hydra on a run the subline is looking confident and comfortable as paul almost got a kiss on the camera there that'd have been something special as well but here we go slow things down right now that's the game plan for optic things are getting a little bit out of control for our major one champions crimson a donut as is Pro Luton Shotzi. Well, I mean, even for Dashi, he doesn't miss shots very often, but he misses there. And I mean, I was looking at the KDs, you know, Krim drop a 1.56, and these are certainly two players that only have nice things to say about each other. By the way, Skump is effectively behind every single subliner player, but he's also very much out of the action. Yeah, he'd be out of the action for a moment. As soon as he gets going, he's going to be a dangerous thing to look at in just a moment. Here we go, though. Subline is lining up for the hit. Straight in the sight. Proluk doesn't get anything in there. Kismet's already on the bomb. You've still got the man at the back. Shotzi watching that bomb from this back window position. He's in trouble. Tagged up. This is not working out. Shot Skump, though, he's still the one player of the insurance policy. A big win from Kismet on the front line. Here comes Scumpy. Late to the party, but he's here just when he needs to be chance. He's just playing sneaky, just trying to get the timing right, and he gets the timing perfect for one, Ooh, but that's 8.5, yes. and they're not there in time. Skump made the play. Saves the day in the last possible seconds. That is unbelievable timing. Wicked timing, indeed. Outstanding composure, and Skump was out of the play for so long, but you best believe he's still involved. A tremendous round for Optic Texas. I mean, 10% luck, 20% skill, 70% timing on, on that final gunfight, right? Because New York actually make the perfect play just to swarm in to, like, put themselves in the situation where they can hop on the defuse. But it was the late flank the entire time that bails them out. So shout out to the king is pro loot and Shotzi still sitting on a donut. Again, it's, it's not necessarily the gunny is not working out right now. New York subliners have got Texas number in the fights, but the big brain plays from Skump get them on the board. Biggest problem though is you can't do that every round. We've got to see those donuts change. There's Optic Texas only down around for now, but that could get ugly real quick. We've seen some ish today, friends. And I think right now the, the game plan probably just to try to catch a player off rotation because Krim is certainly looking towards the middle of the map and. The bomb hasn't wrapped back to A, even though subliners are putting the pressure over there. Now you see actually Kismet making a move, and keep in mind, Kismet is going to be on a five spree. Skump has a little bit of help, but Shotzi has fallen. Skump now by himself and three players nearby. Oh, he lives for this, though, man. He's playing real sneaky. Heard a lot. Did he get checked? He did. Just the other side. If he... Oh, man. Don't make a sound. Don't even breathe. Doesn't matter. Pro though, still alive now. 2v3. Dashi trying to find something. Bomb planted. If he can catch these players on the runaway, that'd be very impressive. He does. Good kill. It's a 2v2. So, though, it's the clutch spots that they haven't cleared out. And I think right now, if they're grouped up together, they're just going to have to gun these players. And, well, oh my God, they're getting flanked as it's happening. Kismet on a five. This might be the two to get the glide. This could be the two to get the glide. This is the two to get the round as well. Eyes on the first, at least. That's the second. He doesn't check it. He does. Dashi Whoa, wins the fight. 20 seconds now. 1v1. Paul has to keep the bomb safe. Can Dashi win the fight? The answer is no. Subliners once again. Right place, right time. It just always there. I mean, making the good plays have done their homework. You got the reads on the scump spot laying down inside of office. They're doubled up when they're taking Chow's on Shotzi. And even the play call for Kismet. He's playing for streaks and there was no fear in his heart. Makes the perfect flank. He might not get the glide, but definitely puts Paul in a, a pretty easy spot to secure the round. And I mean, this is this is kind of dominant right now for the subliners. Kinda. The Krim ain't got a kill. He doesn't need one. <laughs> Give me something, Krim. Come on. Shots he's still on the donut as well, so it's a weird one for sure. Heavy hit towards B. Optic are in the prime position to get this one done on the defense, but here we go. There's the defense from Hydra. First blood, in and out, no questions asked, bomb down. I would never understand not checking that corner, even if the stuns Shots. don't connect, but maybe you get Dashy as the bailout, and well, he'll need to bail out once again, because you still have the man disadvantage and the bomb down in the toughest possible spot. And someone's got to go collect it. I think Scump is going to have to be that guy. Decent amount of time to work with, but 
plenty of corners to check right now paul x might be the guy that breaks this down scout pepper pushes out to make a play oh my Four god not cream once again the gunny the subline is just on point dashy now on the 1v3 technical ace if he wins the whole thing oh god damn all right there we go yeah yeah cream you tell him you tell him cream like i said him and Dashi only have nice things to say about each other. Well, look, I mean, there's two dudes who are cosplaying as Bruce Wayne, and there can only be one right now, man. Let me tell you, Fat Man, he saw the signal in the sky, and he took a mad <laughs> on Bruce there. Let's get it. Right, next round. This is hot. Krim's fight. There's no way they lose this map now. No way, man. After Krim gets the gunny on both Scum and Dashi like that, come on. 4-1 subliners. And you asked him to get a kill, by the way. He didn't need one for the first couple rounds, but delivers with three in the last one. Can't close doors, though. It can only do one at a time. Maybe a, a nice thing. Finally, a first blood and a bit of fresh air for Optic now with the man advantage. And the bomb has not yet crossed that B site. My Paul X it. just looking for something. He saw something. He saw scum. Guns won. Oh, my word. Shots are in. No more to be had there, though. On the outside of the site, though, Kismet now trying to keep the bomb safe. Oh, he saw shots. His ankles, but they're fast ankles. He's long gone. Krim now gets to the fight from behind. A little late. Timing could be great. Finds himself one. Shotzi last up in the 1v2. He's our Mountain Dew featured player. He's an insanely talented individual. He's having a bit of an off day today. This could be the turnaround moment for him. And this is, well, now it's just going to end. Kismet nope. with the nope. raids and subliners. Nope. Even in the 3v4, get it done. Catch Optic getting over aggressive, making the plays and crib again, shooting Dashy in the back. But <sighs> I mean, maybe we talk about the fat man too much. Kismet right now, double digits hit early on on this Berlin. And honestly, like in, in every map so far, I mean, there's only two, but Kismet has been the playmaker. And we talked about that in a big way when he started, we joined the roster in the Pro-Am again. They did win the Pro-Am. They didn't receive any CO points for the Pro-Am, which is honestly a tragedy for a team that's looking so good right now. But 5-1 here on Berlin. Kismet, 10 and 3. Falls onto the bomb site immediately. The guns are up, but Dashi draws first blood. Two right, as just well. a second. Yeah, big kills over on that fire tank. Takes down Krim with the challenge. Well, that leaves the kids Whoa! in a tough spot. And small window of opportunity, but everyone's going to get <laughs> shut down. Skumped there towards the end to make that a very quick round for Optic. 5-1 is the deficit they're working from. A quick round to get on board. And hey, back-to-back -back rounds where at least they get the first blood. So they're at least starting to find a couple more of these kills, but still a very deep hole they're digging themselves out of. Yeah, that was a, a very confident round. That's what you want to see out of Optic Texas. That's the way they've played for so long. That's the style. It's in your face. It's very confident. No hesitation. And that was a perfect example of it. You're still on map point now for the subliners. Dash and Scum, 6-6 six, six each. We clear out of A. See what shots he can find here. I mean, he's responsible for this entire site by himself. Dash, he finds another first blood. And they've cleared out so much of the B site that I was going to say... They have to know almost for a fact that the bomb is over towards A, but you see shots. He's still a, a little bit concerned about his own flank. The nade's coming through, though. That has to give up the, the name of the game, and you see Optic right now working on the swarm. Oh, shots. He takes the shots onto the first player, and then Hydra is already immediately wrapped back, able to maybe get a few more here. This is unreal, man. 2v3, Hydra. Fast transition indeed, Skump, though. He's got his scent, and he knows he's in the building with him. Will he check this? Will Hydra spot the top side? Or will Skump get the easy kill? <sighs> it's an easy kill. And unfortunately, the banister just obscures his vision now. Paul X in the 1v3. That's just incredibly patient from Skump. Just big chilling, like, you know, part of the way up to top third. And now Paul X trying to get the bomb down, but is getting Damn. hunted. As Wait. is tradition, wins gunfights that he shouldn't, but eventually gets taken down. And you got to sweat for it just a little bit, but... Pretty solid round coming out of Optic. Uh, again, they've been pretty heavy on their stacks on defense to whatever site they're going. And even there, it pays off pretty well. Again, Dashy, uh, another first blood goes his way. Shotzi playing around that A site to perfection, making sure he doesn't get caught out. And well, there you go. 5 1 deficit. Now chop down to two. Yeah, subline as we test the metal now. Round by round, that confidence starts to dwindle. 5 to 3. One more, and things are starting to get real nervous. 
Passed it over towards the B bomb site right now for the members of Optic. Subliners line up on the defense. Nades going out. Krum with the top side. He just saw that little shadow. Dashi's four spree could become a five now. Well, it definitely gets shots in as that bomb is moved. But look where the bomb moves to. Hydra again in the exact same corner gets first blood and actually does get traded out. I don't know what kind of angle Pro Lou just had, but that's a nice catch. And Kismet in between the door gets shot, tagged up, and traded. But not before Paul makes this a 2v2. That's a really hard gunfight to win, and he's not going to get the job done here. Proloop once again saves the day for his team, picking up them trades every time. Backs up with a bomb now as well, so Subliners have fast read this. Crim's already on the play, and this could go really well if he checks the timing here. If he goes inside the back of this warehouse, that's one thing, but Optic may have just slipped it. They've gone. They're out. Crim's not checked it. Optic might be able to plant A unless Paul has an eye on this. Well, no, Paul got spotted. Oh, he's dead, sure. bro. Waiting for the time. He couldn't quite get it. Not an easy Ooh. gunfight to win, and now Crim. Trying to avoid getting turned on. Dashy playing with some food. Four speed for him. The bomb is playing. And Paul X here. Quick though for the challenge. Leaving Dashy 1v2 for the game life. Here comes Dashy. Big shots at close range now. It's a one on one. And this is it. It's Batman. It's Fat Man. It's a one on one for the round. For the subliners. For the map. For Dashy to keep his team in it. 30 seconds on the bomb. One will be Adam West. One will be George Clooney. Oh my God. The stakes have never been higher. It goes Krim, his shoulders. Oh my God, Dashi wins it. And man, it was close. It was close, but that's a massive win. And this is the momentum shift. It's one round at a time. Krim's controller hit the lap. He's already cracking fingers. That was a big round and everyone knows it. And I'm not a lip reader, but I'm going to go ahead and take a, a small guess. That <laughs> it was Dashi that Krim 6 was talking a little bit of smack to, i.e. through his camera. No more trash talk now. That is an intense look of focus as that 5-1 lead has faded. You still have the advantage. But you got Dashy on a six. One more kill. You get the glide. It's not incredibly impactful on Berlin, except for the fact that you can see everybody on the map. No first blood there. Subliners taking their time to play for a pick. And they should take their time. They've had the advantage in nearly every single round possible, and they've done the best they possibly can to run it. Krim v Dashi once again. Krim wins the fight from that angle. The tags were in. And Dashi's spree remains alive. One more kills, a glide bomb. We might run it back in a moment. But for now, Subline is still holding strong. No one hit the bomb just yet. I mean, they are really trying to play for this pick. And Krim, same angle looking for it. But Dashi just quick with the movement. He's playing for the intel. And there you go. You get the glide. You have the man advantage, but the A site has been somewhat left open. Optic might be playing to nade these guys off site once you make the noise. If those doors are open, maybe you start the cook, but Kismet not on bomb yet. Dashi's back in, man, and he is laser focused right now. Paul X levels it up. 3v3. Here comes the plant. Oh, massive nades. Big kills once again. Paul lost, man, and it's over. One round at a time. True ice in the veins, Optic Texas are back in this. What are we watching? Look, I, real quick, I, I think it was the Ravens that I think had the perfect strat to play around the glide bomb where they sent two players with cold blooded into sight. I don't know who has offense, who has defense, but if subliners are keeping track, they should be able to know that Dashy has the glide, should be able to play around cold blooded, and there's some weird potential to try to make a play to avoid getting spotted. And they are going to be on defense. Only one player going towards B, so it's not going to be the complete rip, but you know what the play call has to be. And funnily enough, they're leaning towards A, even with the glide. But 100%, they're waiting to call this in. Still information gained from this one. And again, the final round now. Glides come through. Kismet on the bomb site. That's at least one player on B, so you know that's up. Here comes Shotzi oh into the site. Yeah. Kismet, he takes care of him. Shotzi is done. Still trying to keep the play alive though. Kismet checking the corners. He, made, he saw the tip of the head of Dashi. Oh my God, Kismet finds all three. That's her, that's it. It's done. It's done. New York subliners stay alive. What a search it was. And Kismet, yeah man, take a bow. What a final play. Shotzi doesn't check nothing. He gets checked. That's a stinger. Optic Texas go down 0-2. Dude, yeah, and, and look, you call on the glide. No one has cold blooded, so you can call them all out. But how do you call out that there's someone in sight like that detailed? Like if they're not in office, like it's always oh, in the middle section behind the desk, like in this thing. And it's just it's so tricky. And I don't know, man, <laughs> having the glide and going that direction Ooh. does not seem the easier way to go. And Jossie felt the pain. No comeback there.
one in 10 performance out of the wizard. I think Subliners, I mean, hey, a dub's a dub. You're 2-0 up right now, round 11 or a 6-1 makes no difference. They're happy for the W on top of a performance like that from Kismet, who back-to-back -back games has been lights out. Unreal, man. Unreal. It got shit.